G'day guys, Tim here again. Got a little tip for you this time on ducking. Now the reason we might use ducking is so that we can help create a little bit of space for our voiceover, in this case over top of a, a song, which is just a piano intro here from Dream on the Horizon by Craig Faraway. He's the guy I'm actually doing the sweeper for. So the idea behind that is to give the voiceover just a little bit more breathing room as opposed to EQ and carving out some of the frequencies of this music bed. Uh, we can actually use a ducker to just drop down temporarily the volume of the music bed just to help the vocal shine through a little bit more. But obviously when the vocal's not there, again, it will lift the music back up to where it was originally. So just using a little bit of compression to do that. And that compression is only on the on the music bed track here. So inside Reaper, this is what I would do if I was gonna, gonna do this. So if we go to the music track here, and we go to effects, and we type in this one here. So that's the compressor. So the one I find that works quite good is this one here down there, well, Master Bus New York Compression. So the New York Compression Master Bus scenario is adding dry signal back into the wet signal. In this case, we don't want to do that. But what we do want to do is send a send to this compressor from the voiceover track. So we just click on that, see the little plug, and let it go. So that's now being sent there. So what we have to do is select the input, and it's coming from an auxiliary input. Okay. And one of the things I could probably try to do here is just give you an idea of, if you go to preview filter, and it should be able to play us just the signal that is feeding this compressor so that we know we've got the right thing going to it. Switch on the amp and dial in some of the... Good. So you can see that there, and it was just starting to do a little bit of compression. Okay, so what we do here is we want to dial it in so that we can see... Oh, I don't know, use your ears, but I usually go for somewhere about 3 to 5 dB, just depending on the track. If it's like a heavier guitar track that I'm trying to drop out and duck down a little bit, then maybe I'd use a little bit more. And you can get some kind of cool pumping effects, and it can add a little bit more energy to it. In this case, it's not really desired. Um, but, you know, again, use your resin depending on what, what your... Uh, which your format's going to be. So let's take this signal and see how much compression we can dial in just on this particular track. Now you'll see it going down red, so this is how much compression that we're actually getting from the vocal track. So that's forcing that compressor to drop the music track here. So let's play it along and see what happens. Switch on the amp and dial in some of that Craig Tube magic. W-C-R-A-I-G. Okay, so if we listen to that track itself, what we can do is do an A-B comparison of turning this on and turning it off and seeing what it actually does to the music track itself, and you should be able to hear that. See how it kind of changes the energy a little bit of that particular track? So you could actually turn it off again and listen to it normally. Turn it on. Probably a little bit heavy. So let's just adjust that. There we go. Let's put it back into the mix again. Switch on the amp and dial in some of that Craig Tube magic. W-C-R-A-I-G. So I can check that in mono just to make sure everything's sticking in the right place. So if we go... Switch on the amp and dial in some of that Craig Tube magic. W-C-R-A-I-G. Okay, so it just gives us a little bit more room and we can actually utilize the music bed and actually lift it up higher if need be just to give us a little bit more depth so that it's still got some energy to it, but it's not gonna cloud that vocal. So the overall mix sounds like this. Let's just get this out of the way. Switch on the amp and dial in some of that Craig Tube magic. W-C-R-A-I-G. So there you go. Gets a bit excited, doesn't it? Wants to play it again. Let me turn that off there.
So that can give you just a little bit more of an idea of another way to approach a similar, whether it's a problem or you just want to add some energy to what's going on, but keep the music bed driving the whole track. In this case, just a calm one, uh, as opposed to dialing out frequencies and, and cutting this and chopping that. So it's just another approach to do that. So hopefully it's helped and uh, try that in a production. See if it's something that's going to work for you uh, as opposed to just going reaching straight away for the EQ and really changing the the overall tone of your music bed. And sometimes that's a good thing. And we can look at that in another video. But this is just gives you another tool or another string to your bow, as they say. So keep it up. Happy mixing. And we'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.